Hey everybody, it's Nick. I got a quick tutorial for you today um, that's about how to read a plan and how to read a section. And this goes into the very first lab that we're going to do uh, where I gave you a drawing uh, in AutoCAD that has the plot style table uh, and then I gave you the black and white drawing that's the output. And I realized some of the questions I'm asking uh, in the uh, um, lab report uh, need a little bit of unpacking because you might not have ever actually um, seen a plan before and although you might have had a map or looked at a, something in a video game it's not exactly the same as the way that, that we represent plans as architects and so uh, what I've done is I've got the drawing in front of me here and then I've got actually a digital model of the space because I think it's hard to interpret like what the drawing is uh, this plan and this section here if you don't really understand the space that we're talking about, there's actually quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of you know guesswork involved, right? And I want to try to be um, explicit about it um, as much as I can. So um, you know, a few things you might recognize where you can see you know these are these are doors. You might have seen a door swing before. Um, you might recognize you know these as stairs uh, and maybe these as windows. But you know, like what about like this thing here? And what about like why are these lines uh, dashes and not some other kind of line? Um, uh, yeah, what are these lines here? You know, why why are they the same weight or the same color? Um, so I, I want to kind of give you a little bit more context, like I said. And to do that, I'm going to go into a program called Rhino. And I would imagine that most of you haven't seen Rhino before. Um, you may have seen a program like SketchUp or some other kind of 3D modeler, but uh, Rhino, as we're going to be talking about later in the class, is a uh, is a very precise modeling program. It's used by a lot of architects, especially when you're working with like things like digital fabrication, uh, which it works with very well, and uh, computational design. Uh, but I'm not going to get into like how I'm act what I'm actually doing with the software and how I'm doing it. Uh, I just want to show you this. You can imagine is like a little model of the space that's in uh, this drawing. Okay, and that's what I want you to kind of start with, and 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 actually in this drawing as well, which is which is a a section cut through the uh, model. So like typically, you know, when you're drawing, you're working back and forth between some kind of three dimensional model or a three dimensional representation and then you're documenting it or you're designing it you know through the drawing and so this is the space that we're talking about you can see that it looks like a courtyard that's that's kind of you kind of come in from above you process on access to this other doorway there's this kind of column or or, or something that like sticks out there's this kind of pergola where these folks are kind of seated and you see these 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 um, kind of beams windows maybe some kind of beds uh, and then some other kind of bending and some windows. Um, if I look at this actually in not a rendered view, and I just put things on as the colors that they are, you can start to see more like where these gray lines are some kind of design on the ground. You can see that this this line from the wall translates across to the stairs. Um, you can see that there's this kind of uh, other color outside of these. This this might be some kind of bedding for plants or some kind of seating uh, some kind of seating area. You can see that there's uh, some other kind of material that's around these uh, these uh, uh, purple walls. Um, and then there's this kind of table uh, that people are sitting on, or this kind of bench table kind of hybrid. Um, and you'll notice, you know, so the colors, uh, different things are represented by different colors. Uh, and we talk, we'll talk about this in class and, and more, but you know, some of this is like convention where oftentimes you're representing things, uh, hierarchically because of how, uh, how important they are, or how much, how much, uh, importance they have in the drawing. So that's why, for example, the walls are, are, are this pink because that's one of the thicker line weights. And then we might step down. Well, and actually above that, which is very interesting, right? is this orange column, right? Why orange, the, the color orange actually stands out above purple in our uh, drawing hierarchy. If we go here, we have white or black for the cut line in the section, which we'll talk about. Actually, I, I, miss, I misspoke. Uh, so then purple and then orange and then light green. So orange is, orange is not as high in, the, in, 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 that, in that hierarchy as the uh, purple. Um, and the orange is there and it stands out. It's not necessarily the height of the object. Like I want to, I want to be clear about that. It can be. It often, you know, is. Um, but it's more about the importance of the object uh, architecturally. And the walls are, are deemed in this case more important than this this kind of pillar or, or column or something that that stands out. The next things that that are important to the person making the drawing are the stairs. 
and the stairs do kind of stick out a little bit, but their their landings, they speak to the openings and the uh, walls and the doorways. So the stairs are 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 this light green. The table is considered kind of important, so it's also uh, uh, drawn in a light green color. Um, and again, I just want to be clear, I'm making things the colors that they are so that they stand out. It's not like this thing is actually that color or that's e even the way that you would do it. Um, things would have different materials applied to them. They would have a lot more detail. What I'm trying to do, though, is to, sh is to show you uh, the idea of like how something that you know is basically a space that you're designing, you know, that, that looks like a real space, ends up as something that is flat and two-dimensional. And there are choices that we often have to make for the scale of the drawing, for the amount of detail that we need for the contractor or for the client in the ways that we draw things. And so, for example, like when you draw these windows here, there's obviously much more going on in a window. There's mullions that might be divided up. It might sit in the wall in a certain way. But what we've done right now is reduced it to a windowsill and a lintel and just the two edges of the inside and outside of the glass. And, you know, you can say it's kind of a dumb window, uh, but it gets the idea across that there is a space in the wall and you go in and you come out and in the back you go in and you come out. And those proportions are very, are very clear. Uh, at the same time, we've done some stuff with the overhead elements. So we had this interesting problem. Well, actually, I'll show you something. So when you draw a plan... What you're actually doing is is actually making a cut somewhere. You're not really looking at it, not necessarily looking at it from above, because as you see, if we look at it from above, we don't see where the door we see where the doors are, the swings are, but we don't really get a sense of that threshold. We don't get a sense of the openings and how one space on one side of them might speak to the other side. Um, we don't get the idea that you could walk, you know, under these things, or you could walk under this pergola here. Um, and so like, again, if we, if we're just representing it as, you know, you might from like a helicopter or like a crane, you're actually missing the, the uh, story. Um, what we actually do in architecture by convention is that you imagine that there is a line, like an imaginary laser or some or sword or something that would come in and basically like cut, you know, everything apart. And so now we can start to look at, you know, some of these like inside and outside relationships. We can start to see thresholds of things. But what we've asked, but what we've done by accident is, you know, we've cut the railings. We've cut these overhead pieces here. We cut that like pergola apart. And so sometimes what we need to do in a drawing, because we want to understand that there's a space happening, you know, from above is we have to put those things back. And when we do that, the convention that we use is that we use uh, a dashed line. We use these kind of lines to indicate, okay, there's something overhead. It's cut at that certain height and we're looking down. But now we want to begin to start to look up at these things and say where they are. Um, and so that's just what that is. And we don't always have to do like for like doorways and for, you know, for windows, we don't necessarily put those back. And with the stairs, like we don't really do that because there are some stairs below. So we just, we just kind of draw in the stair as if it was from above as well. And that's, and that's, that's what's in the drawing here, these single lines here. So even those, these have become very abstracted where the railing, even though the railing has a thickness and this particular drawing is only represented as a line. And the trick is, as you're learning how to draw and learning how to read drawings, is, is that there are certain things that architects generally agree about in the ways that we draw things and like how we draw things. There are certain things that the offices that you work with or that the studio that you're in will, will choose in the way that they represent things. Like maybe your professor says you always draw the like door swing, right, which is imaginary. Your professor might say, no, we don't you know, have the swings in ours and we, we're not going to have those because that gets in the way of the space. It might have a philosophical reason uh, for that. Um, or, and then eventually, as you get good and as you start to uh, understand exactly what it is you want to say as a designer, you might begin to have your own conventions for how you use things. And that operates within the space of things that people expect. You know, you can't completely change how people draw plans. Otherwise, no one will understand how your, how your, how your plans work. Uh, but at the same time, you can make some choices about the way that you apply hierarchy, the way that you represent details for the scale. And so it's that tension between uh, the shared understanding uh, of architects 
and the creative choices that you can make uh, as an architect. Because the drawings, even though they're meant to communicate uh, maybe an idea about construction or about space, they also can communicate you know, um, more complicated or more nuanced ideas that you have as a creative individual. And so you have to push on that language a little bit because sometimes that language that, the, that everyone uses isn't, isn't enough. And uh, so that's something to kind of think about and kind of look forward as you go. And your professors will help you like negotiate uh, what that what that is. OK, but anyway, so sometimes you might see a drawing and it might not work the way that, that another drawing that you've seen uh, uh, does. And that's probably OK. Like let's err on the side of giving the benefit of the doubt <laughs> and say that that person knows what they're doing. And maybe you can learn from that, you know, uh, but as you begin to get trained as an architect and you start to see more plans and drawings, you'll, you'll figure this stuff out. So that's kind of how like a plan, you know, works. And, and that's kind of the ways that these, that the space that uh, we designed this from gets translated uh, into the, the drawing that you have. And so that should hopefully help you answer those questions. Uh, that are in the um, lab report. And then the other thing I want to show you briefly is this idea of what a section is. And a section is, is really the, the, the idea, but it's actually uh, a vertical cut. So this is what the drawing of, of a section you know, looks like. Um, this is the drawing that you got. And you can see that it follows some same conventions. You don't, excuse me, um, you don't necessarily have to use the same colors for things as you did in the plan. Remember, you're looking just at always establishing a visual hierarchy, you know, things that are uh, important or less important or things that are in front or things that are behind. And sometimes you have to apply those weights a little bit differently. Uh, oftentimes you will share the same uh, uh, line uh, widths line weights, but not always. Again, everything's kind of a gray area. The most important thing is that this cut line, you know, the line that actually cuts into the ground, into the objects is the heaviest line. And then we have walls. And then we have the secondary walls. We have this, the, the column here, which is like a little protrusion in the ground is, is actually given orange because it stands out more than these do. Um, you might debate that. And then you have the red, oh, sorry, you have the green for some of these elements here. And then you have the red, which is the windows, which are actually behind everything. So because they're out of plane, they're, they're a lighter line weight. And then you have these red lines on these objects, which in the drawing kind of represent like a brick pattern or some kind of stacked, you know, wood, just some kind of texture or grain. And so they're also not as important. So they, they are also red, um, but they also kind of help give it this kind of horizontality which is uh which which is which is important so you might consider those like a hatch or like a texture okay so let me let's take a look real quick before we finish here and i'll show you kind of the idea uh of the um section here um we're gonna undo that here we go so um if you look at this imagine again this is kind of like two face in batman or something right that you are going to take a line here, which is the line in your drawing. See this red? That's your section line. That is the line where the laser kind of comes through, right? And it's going to cut this thing in half. And then you are going to, it's like cutting an apple or a pineapple or some other kind of thing, right? Where if you look at this, that's what's there. Now you can see though that like, that's actually not what's happening. We have the drawing, which is flat, but what's really, what we're really looking at are like these lines, like the, these are the lines of the objects and we're looking at all of them together so that you get that, you get this full view of the section and how thick things are and, and what's and what sizes they are. And I'm just going to show you something. So like, if you want to kind of imagine this, uh, as a, um, as a, as a, as like an operation. This is the space. You can see the things you can see, and I'm exaggerating it here. And as you get infinitely far away and things begin to flatten, that is the drawing of the section. So it, so it shows you like what's in the foreground, which is cut, which are these kind of objects here. And then the kind of middle ground and then the background all across one 
uh, image. And there are other kinds of sections depending upon how complex the project is and if you have to see like mechanical stuff. Or sometimes you don't want all that space. But what you're attempting to present through hierarchy is a space. That's what, you know, all drawings, unless they're diagrams, I mean, all architectural drawings are really spatial. You're really trying to, to, to convey not just location and measurement, but a, a feeling of, a, of a space. And line weights are the tools that really allow us to do that. Um, and, and it's because it is often convenient to design and to think in two dimensions. It's very, very hard to design in model, um, in model by itself. Okay, so hopefully that's going to give you, again, more of a visual um, idea of what's happening uh, in that drawing. Because again, I appreciate it's difficult not even knowing what the space is to say, okay, now read a plan of it. But eventually you will be able to. You will be able to take a drawing like this and really a section and a plan and begin in your imagination to reconstruct the space that it represents. All right, I will see you all in class. Uh, have a good day.